why? Why are these? Why is my child moody? And why do they have <clears throat> these emotional uh, outbursts? And they seem very emotional. They're very grumpy, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. Why is that? And what can I do about it? Is there anything that you can do? And we've all seen it. I mean, I think that the greatest one for me is just. I'm a little bit older, so maybe I don't know if you remember this. There was this program, and um, I think it was Harry Enfield, and he used to do this thing, this Kevin character, and is that he turns into the teenager overnight. So one day he's like, "Hey, I want to play Mario Kart," and he's playing like waiting to get Mario, and all of a sudden he's like turned to thirteen, and the clock goes bing, and he suddenly goes, Ugh! and he turns into this, "I hate you." I think it's amazing to watch. So funny, but anyway, so that's almost like the character we see, isn't it? When we see like these preteen teens, is what happens. What's happening is like they they're in this. It turned into Kevin. <laughs> What's going on? <laughs> um, but why are they like that? What is going on? It's not like on the Harry Enfield show where he just changed. Um, <laughs> it's almost like that. I can't get that out of my head right now. But anyway, why is my child so moody? And why do they um, have this emotional, you know, they're really stuck in these emotional, um, get stuck in this emotional side tantrum, or whatever. Um, so what's happening? So of course your child at 10 plus, well, they start to obviously grow. You ever seen them like where one day you're walking around, they're here and you wake up the next morning and they're, whoosh, they've just grown. They've just grown. Well, it takes a lot of energy to do that. But what we've got to consider is there's a thing in your, your body being released constantly, it's called cortisol. And cortisol is, you know, it's that fight, flight, faint, um, whatever, hormone. And um, what it does, it, it's almost, almost like a, it's, re it's released because of this. When you get fear, when you get anxious, when you get stressed. Like I say, if you're, you're, your amygdala is constantly searching for, for problems to, uh, to look for, to, you know, is, is there any danger anywhere? So when it sees it, it starts to release this cortisol, that fight, flight hormone. But it's also released as a, a pain reliever. So, I mean, when you're growing, I mean, teens, preteens, they don't feel themselves growing because the cortisol always being released constantly and it acts as a as pain relief, you know. So it's not like, oh, I can feel my fingers and my body growing. They don't do that. OK, but it's released this cortisol. But of course, when you've got cortisol running throughout your body and then they're like they're a little bit moody. But what's the first thing people do when they see someone uh, when they're a little bit um, when they're moody or, you know, what I mean, what they're grumpy, you know, they're emotional. Stop being so moody. Well, that's really going to help. You know what I mean? Let me ask you, if you, the last time you were, you felt a little bit down, someone come up to you and said, hey, will you stop being moody? Did you instantly go, oh, wow, thank you for saying that. I feel so much better now. That's not going to help, is it, at all? Especially with the overabundant amount of cortisol running through these guys' bodies. You know, obviously they need the pain relief. It's not just that, but their brain is being reconstructed. You know, it's going from adolescent brain to an adult brain. You know, um, the prefrontal cortex under construction, there's a lot of energy coming to the back of the brain here. You know, there's lots of things going on, which once again, require a lot of energy. OK, so they can feel tired. And that's why sometimes they feel a little bit down, um, etc. But mainly because this cortisol, this stress is running through the body all the time. And then what they get is, hey, why are you moody? Why are you emotional? And of course, that makes them more emotional. What do people most um, teachers, parents, etc., do then is they shout at them, hey, come on, stop. You need to do this. Um, it's time for you to get out your room. It's time to start doing this or start doing that. Well, of course, then you add more cortisol and it builds and builds and builds um, until they just get more and more moody. And like I've said, imagine yourself on those days when you're not feeling quite up to it and you're feeling a little bit down, or a little bit stressed or you feel a bit sad. Stop feeling sad. I mean, that's really helped me. It doesn't. So so what do, what do you need to do? OK, so we understand why. We understand why this, this problem is science. OK, but why? What do we need to do? We need to aid them by countering cortisol. That's simply it. And so what you need is you really need the release of the good hormones to counter cortisol throughout the day. So throughout the day, it's not, it's not just like um, one thing. I'll bring them to a, a class and then bring them to a class for, for an hour and then that's their problems fixed for the week. It's not that. So that's what we do here at Skills at Icon is that we don't just teach the kids martial arts and etc we, we help them for a program and we help to stimulate the parts of the brain that need more empowerment we help to release good chemicals to count the cortisol through that time but what we do is we help the parents we have like educational courses that parents go on so that they can watch this and they can take what we do in the class here and use it all week long so you've got to consider that if a child's brain is constantly being flooded with cortisol 
What if we had the power, the skills, the knowledge to constantly counter that throughout the, through the morning? So you, they wake up and they've got like 100 cortisol, for example, in their brain. And what happens, what I need to do now is I need to count that with 100 good things. How do I do that? How, do, how am I going to get them points in there? You know, and it's really simple when you know how. Um, it's one thing we do from beginning to end at classes here at Icon using the skills program is what we do is as soon as they walk in the door, we're already employing um, our teaching methods from child development to help them count these things, which is why if you ever came to one of our classes, you'll see all the guys smiling, laughing, et cetera, et cetera. Why does Steve? Yeah, they're always, always well behaved at your class. They're always having fun. They say how much fun they have. When they get home, they just go into video games and Ugh. yeah, because we know what we're doing here because we're doing that. And the parents the parents that now come in have access to our online coaching as well. We have online coaching, They're really like mini courses that you can literally watch within 40 minutes. You don't have to watch them in one day. So the thing is even less than that. So uh, a about half an hour. So about half an hour, but they're broken down into little bits of so like three minute videos. You watch one one day, watch another one day. And what it does it just helps you to understand what's going on and what can I do at home? Because we're employing these things in, the, in our school. But what can you do at home as a parent? Because I think for me is a big step, um, especially since joining Skills and having my amazing coach, uh, Melody Johnson, that's been really guiding me. And that is the understanding that when you teach martial arts, you're not just teaching the, the kid that shows up. If you're teaching child development martial arts, what you're trying to do is trying to help the family, trying to help. the You know, it's like it takes a village. Right. So you're trying to help the kid. You're trying to help the family. You're trying to help the brothers and sisters, you're trying to help the parents. To all to just get this understanding so that the whole family suddenly starts to run a lot smoother. And with our classes and obviously now our super powerful online programs, which is amazing. We have so many good feedbacks for that. They can sit, literally watch that. And it's, it's those aha moments when you go, oh, that's why. That's why. Oh, all I need to do is this. OK, I've got it. It's those aha, aha moments that are just gold, you know, and that's really helping our our parents, our families here, I can introduce the team. Um, so thank you for the, the there's two people that send a very similar question. Um, and because they were the same age group, uh, I think one's 11, one was 12. Um, this is a great question, isn't it? What a great question. Why is, why is my child becoming Kevin? You know what I mean? <laughs> why, why are they suddenly, you know, when there was five and six, they were just full of energy, seven to nine. They were so excited and they hit like the 10, 11 mark and suddenly, oh, I'm just going to play video games all day. I just want to sit in my room. I don't want to do do anything, you know. And one of the things I one thing one other thing I can add to that is um, if you employed the discipline of timeouts and naughty steps and go to your rooms um, when they were being naughty, you encourage this because you know they had that. You know, as a grown, grown, especially especially this age group, ten to fourteen. If you're using these, these, these timeouts and go to your room and those type of things, imagine what's going on in the brain right now. Is that it's feeling bad about something? You know, it's already feeling bad because going through these, you know, brain changes. Um, there's cortisol being released because the body's growing. It needs to make a painkiller. That stress, that anxiety, it's flooding the hippocampus. It's trying to, it's making it hard for them there. You know, prefrontal cortex under construction. You know, and it's, it's, it's not making good choices right now. Everything's going wrong. And so they're not feeling good about themselves. And so they're not feeling good about themselves. And we tell them, hey, just go to your room. Go to your room. Go to timeout. Go do this. Go that. And when they get older, they start to feel they have an emotional problem. They feel something bad. What does anyone do? I want to go on their own. I want to go and sit on their own. Oh, I don't know why he's on his, in his room all the time. Well, if you employed those timeouts, that's probably one of the reasons because they got so used to, I mean, the brain is like, it, it remembers things, right? <laughs> Hopefully. So it gets this, you know, this idea that, hey, look, let's write this down on this piece of paper in our brain. Feel bad, isolate. Naughty, isolate. OK, so and then I get these feelings when I'm late. I'm starting to feel a bit, you know, I feel a bit anxious. I'm feeling bad. I'm feeling emotional. OK, isolate. That's what the brain's telling. That's what I was told. That's how I was brought up. You know what I mean? So let's go do that. So instead, we need to employ other ways. We need to work on the four great good chemicals to counter cortisol. So, you know, sometimes if you're using these timeouts, that can also mean, hey, go to your room, you know, and then later when you feel bad, they go to the rooms naturally. I don't know. And then then people say, well, I don't know why he's in his room all day. Well, maybe maybe it was because we made them do that. That's definitely something to think about.